All right, so I just picked up this Bobcat Ransom's 36 inch mower here. Um, I picked it up for 150 bucks and it's got a couple issues with it. Main one being that this pull cord is, the recoil spring is just broken. So he said he had it running and he mowed with it last year. Um, and he would just kind of wind this up and then start it, but it was annoying. So he sold it. Um, and then the spark plug wire is too long. It's kind of melted in a bunch of spots. So he said he would tie it up when he used it. Um, the deck seems pretty solid. Um, the right brake doesn't seem to be working. So it might need an adjustment or a new band. And I think the engine he said was pretty much good. It burned a little bit of oil, but overall was, was fine. So I'm going to dive into that and see what I can find. All right, so this thing actually didn't have a broken recoil spring like you would normally see. Um, it was kind of just fell out. It, it kind of just fell out, it looked like. I'm not really sure how it was supposed to go. The plastic looked kind of chewed up. But you could tell the end of the spring wasn't broken, and it was kind of like tapered. And then it had like, it, it almost looked like it just clipped into the plastic here, which would make sense why it pulled out then. But what I did was I just put it through and then bent it back over itself. So it's it's not going to come off now, and now it's... It's, uh, it's hard to do with one hand here, but that's nice and springy. And it doesn't feel like it's going to come off. So the old pull cord was really super thin, and that wasn't doing it for me. I wanted to get a, a nice heavy-duty pull cord, so I went and bought one of those. came with a brand new handle as well. So I'm going to go ahead and wind that up in there and go ahead and install that. So this thing's all ready to be installed on the mower. Um, that it's it's on there, so it's not gonna pull. But oh, there we go. So that recoils just fine. Um, so now these things did have bolts going through them, but I think I'm just gonna rivet those on there because getting a nut underneath there is gonna be pretty tough. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then this thing, the tank is dry, which is actually a good sign. Can't really see in there but it is dry which is a good sign because that means that the previous owner drained the tank of any fuel or ran out of gas and the carburetor shouldn't be gummed up you said it had it running last year so in theory i should be able to throw gas in here and it should fire up now i don't know if the guy was telling the truth or not it's possible this thing hasn't run in 10 years but we're gonna find out so i'm gonna go ahead and rivet that on and throw some gas in it and see if she'll start all right, so this thing didn't run. Um, I got to sputter a little bit on starting fluid, but I'm gonna go, go ahead and pull the carb off and try and do a carb clean on it. I got the carb off here. Um, I just kind of cleaned everything out. It didn't seem too dirty. Um, there was a little bit of dirt, but it didn't look like anything was clogged. Um, this guy here, it looks like this, you can adjust this, and I accidentally messed with the, the screw on the bottom here, so I'm gonna have to see what the stock setting is for that. Um, and that should allow more or less fuel in the engine, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Alright, so I found a website that kind of walks you through how to clean this carburetor. And I guess there's a, this is called an idle circuit emulsion tube. And it goes right in there. That comes out, and there's a bunch of little tiny pinholes in here. If you look down there, I didn't put this on the ground or anything, but there's some dirt. And that looks like a little piece of grass inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this out, and then set that there and i think there's there's one here that i have to clean as well so i'm going to do all that and hopefully we can get this thing to run all right so i got that thing all back on there and it runs so i didn't even use starting fluid i just put the choke on pulled it a couple times and then i had it sputtering took the choke off a little bit and it fired right up uh, seemed to run pretty good it did sound like it was running a little bit too fast though so i may have to tune that a little bit after but it's kind of late outside as you could see so I'm not going to run it anymore tonight, and that's why I didn't show it to you on video, because I just ran it for a few seconds to make sure it ran, and then I shut it off. But, um, so the next thing I'm going to dive into is probably going to be that starter, or not starter, the spark plug wire. Um, I think what I'm just going to do is kind of just cut it, and then take all this extra wire out of there. I'm assuming this was from a different engine or something, I'm not really sure why it would be that long but i think i'm just gonna uh, kind of take it off and cut it solder it back on to the right length there so that way it's not interfering with the muffler all right so i got that all soldered up made it look all nice and pretty um it actually turned out really well you can barely even tell i did anything because i covered the whole thing with a ton of heat shrink because obviously i'll show you 
the insulation on these wires are so thick because of how much current is going through them. As you can see, there's only a teeny little bit of copper wire inside of there and then all the rest is insulation. So I put like five or six pieces of heat shrink on there and you can barely tell, but this piece right in the middle there is, is kind of light there. But you can't really tell when you look at it, so I'm good with that. And I mean, yeah, you probably would get shocked if you go near it, but it's not really gonna matter because this is all exposed anyway. So I'm not really worried about that either. If you're sticking their hands, your hands over there while it's running, you're gonna get shocked regardless. So that's fixed. Um, next, I wanna look at these wheels. So this one seems a little stiff. I don't know, maybe it needs oil. Definitely needs an adjustment. So I'm gonna see what I can do for that. And then this side, the brakes don't seem to be working at all. So when you pull this all the way back, it should engage the brake, which it's not doing that. So I'm gonna to have to see maybe it needs an adjustment or maybe the brake isn't working at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into that. All right, so that was really easy to fix. Both of them just need an adjustment on the brakes. And basically how you do that is you just pull this pin and then you adjust this shaft. If you move this uh, piece in, it'll make them tighter. And if you move it out, it'll make them looser. So this one had to get moved out like one or two turns. And this works perfectly now. And same with this one, except I need to move it in. So I just need to be tighter. And this worked perfectly as well. And then I put a little bit of lubricant in uh, this area here. That'll focus, but... That way, that works perfect, nice and smooth, and it latches and unlatches every time. So that's all fixed. All right, so next thing I wanna do is just paint the exhaust a little bit. That's super easy to do with high heat paint. Um, I'm just gonna spray this on there and try and mask off the engine and body as best I can. Spray it everywhere where it doesn't look clean. Um, I already pressure washed this thing when I got it, if you couldn't tell. Before you sell anything, you gotta pressure wash it. It's the only way to do it because you will pay more money once it looks cleaner, right? So that exhaust should be clean enough. So I'm just gonna spray this over everything. I'm not gonna go crazy cleaning it off or anything because it's an exhaust and it's gonna get uh, rusty anyway, but it's gonna look better once I clean it, or not clean it, uh, paint it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, that's all painted up. That just looks so much better on there. Look at that, it looks brand new. All right, so now the next thing is I'm going to go through the fluids. So I mean, there's not much on this thing, just engine oil. And then that little gearbox there has gear oil in it. So I'm going to go ahead and change that as well. And if it's like my other, yeah, so it's the same as my other mower. I don't know why they made these things where you drain it right there and there's nowhere for it to drain out. So what I usually do is I just tilt the mower up and then put a big pan down here and it all kind of runs down and makes a big mess. But... It's the way you got to do it, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through that. Hopefully, these have this has uh, gear oil in it. When I got my other Bobcat, it had leaky seals, which these ones don't look like they're leaking. But then again, I also washed it, and but it didn't look like it was leaking too bad before. I don't think they are leaking. So hopefully, this has is full of gear oil, and this gearbox is still good. And then we'll go ahead and change it, and we'll see if there's any glitter in there or not. But yeah, so engine oil, and then this gearbox oil all right so this recoil was kind of binding up a little bit i think what was happening is this system here was uh um, catching and then it would kind of force the uh the pull cord out and it would get all caught up in here but i think it was because this was binding up so briggs and stratton i actually really like this this design that Brig briggs and stratton uses so what they do is they they put a bunch of balls in here the steel balls and I, I stuck them to the outside so that I could take this off. But basically what they do is they fall down into those teeth there. They catch and they can only go one way. See how it's like kind of a sharp edge there and tapered there. So they only catch one way and it's a pretty good design in my opinion. But I think what was happening was this piece, which I'll slide off here, inside of there wasn't lubricated good enough. So it was kind of binding up and if I twisted this, you can kind of hear it, it was uh, not smooth. But now I use fil fluid film for this um, just because I didn't want to use regular grease because I thought it would be too thick and I don't want these bearings to just stick on the side like they are now. Um, but this is kind of thin um, and it's like a good lubricant for this in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead. I only stuck those balls up there so that they would uh, stay and I can put that... Um, these, these, this piece here back on without them being in the way, but 
you can see how this works they catch they fall down and everything seems to be working smooth and properly now so i'm just going to go ahead throw this cover back on there and put the screws back in and that should be all set and then i got to re-rivet this uh, uh pull cord back on all right so that seems to be all uh patched up there a little bit of john deere green paint doesn't match perfectly but it's what i had um that should be stronger not that it really need to be patched um but just it looks a little better better that way uh, i'm not too worried about it in general i mean it's pretty solid you could hammer on this thing anywhere you want pretty much i mean it has a little bit here but if i push on that I, my finger doesn't go through it so that's fine it probably kicked a blade or something up through there at one point but it still seems solid this deck so it should be fine um i did try cutting with it the grass grew a little bit um and this thing cuts amazing these older bobcats uh, cut really nice, so I'm definitely impressed with the cut quality. And I don't know, this thing is pretty much ready to be sold. So um, I'll update you guys if I uh, when I go and uh, sell it. So I wound up selling that thing for 600 bucks. The guy buying it was nice and happy with it. Cut great. Um, no issues with that. Uh, this is my 48 inch bobcat here but i just want to say those mowers the all these mowers are, are just they're great machines this one i still use commercially and they they just they cut amazing and there's not really much to go wrong on them i would recommend getting them with a kawasaki over the kohlers i mean these engines i mean in my experience are just absolutely bulletproof so i mean really there's not much to go wrong um if you get one with the double banded belt like this one has you can run a sulky on it no issue uh, really the only complaint I would have is that the handles on them are really low So what I did on this one is I actually raised it about an inch um, By just drilling new holes in it and then I mean the spacing is not as far apart, but it's still super strong But if you do that you can run it with a sulky just fine and, and they're just great mowers They they uh, they don't really break. There's nothing really to go wrong on them as long as you keep up on the maintenance they uh, They last and there's plenty of them out there. They're not too expensive. So definitely would recommend but that's going to be pretty much it for this video, so thanks for watching.